Hey guys, what's up? James Rath here. So for this week's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, this isn't necessarily a tutorial or a how-to, but this is going to be more of a rundown on some tips and tricks for a new sort of genre of filmmaking called mobile filmmaking. If you're sort of out of the loop, you can uh, create short films and you can vlog and create awesome content with your smartphone or tablets because they have some pretty unique and good cameras in them now, right in your pocket. But there are also many computers that can do pre-production, post-production, and just production in general. So if you're interested in using your phone or your tablet to vlog or create short films or videos in general, and you just want that extra sort of thing to make it better, this might help. Uh, heads up, I'm gonna primarily be talking about Apple devices, um, iOS, iPhones, and iPad. Android devices I'm not too familiar with. I know how to use them, but I don't use them for accessibility purposes. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, I'm legally blind. And I, reasons why I use Apple products. Anyway, moving forward. So to start off this video, I want to talk about the camera app that's pre-installed in every iOS device. And this, this works on your iPod Touch, on your iPhone. Do you, do you need some iPod Touch? I don't know. Uh, if you do, this will help you. And your iPad. If you're not familiar, because a lot of people aren't, and even people who use the camera a lot, I've taught them these features and I'm like, didn't know about this, okay. So anyway, the camera app seems simple. It seems very, not a lot of features there. It's just very user friendly. You got the autofocus and you got the auto exposure, whatever. Did you know you can actually take control of that? So if you actually tap your finger and hold on a specific region and that yellow box will lock It'll create a little blinking uh, animation and it will lock the focus wherever you want. It's also going to lock the exposure, but you can change the exposure manually with that little sun that appears next to the yellow box and you can slide that up or down uh, to adjust the exposure and the light that's coming into the lens. Pretty cool tip. Use it. Try it. Moving on from the standard camera app, if you feel like you need something that's a little bit more fleshed out, a lot more features. I recommend Filmic Pro, it's a paid app in the App Store, but it's really intuitive. You have things like audio meters, so you can track the audio levels in your shots. Uh, you have letterboxing previews, which gives you more of a film look uh, to kind of help you if you're gonna be adding letterboxes. You have grids, you have manual focus, you have manual exposure and aperture, all that fancy ISO stuff that you can adjust in the settings, you can change the uh, FPS, you can go to 24 frames, which is the cinema standard. So if you're creating a short film, it's recommended that you create it unless there's something specifically shot in like slow motion or, you know, for whatever reason. You create your film the way you want to, but it's it's kind of standard. I create all my short films in 24 frames. If you're looking to upload a quick vlog, uh, just shot on your camera using the front facing camera or the, the back facing one, YouTube Capture is an app that allows you to just quickly capture something in landscape and add some royalty free music. You can also just quickly upload that to YouTube, which is nice. And if you're not gonna be using your iPad or your iPhone as a recording device, but Maybe you are, and you have a secondary device. You might want a clapboard if you're creating an actual production, a short film that you know has the scene, has the uh, location, the, the all the production information, the title, all that from the editor and, and the director. And DigiSlate is what I recommend. It's easy to use and it's quick. It's, I believe it's free, and yeah, so. Check out DigiSlate. Steering away from the production side of things, going more back into pre-production. If you actually want to start creating and writing right from your mobile device, you can do that. There's plenty of apps to get you started. If you get a concept or a thought, what I do is I write that in my notes app. It easily syncs to my Mac and my iPad, and I'm able to just quickly get to all my notes, my original thoughts, and then start writing in Celtics, which is what I use for actually writing my scripts. Uh, it's pretty nice. There's also Final Draft, which is another piece of software that, that's nice. They also have mobile apps for these, so you can start writing your script on one device, work on your iPad, or if you're on the train, on the bus, in the car, write, make some adjustments or whatever, and it goes back up to the cloud, back to your devices. It, it's awesome. We, we live in the era of just everything being connected, which is great. If you also want to start doing things like storyboarding and shot listing for your production, you can do that with shot design, and that's gonna be more for storyboarding and setting up design of the 
sets or, or the scene. And if you want to create something for shot listing, um, figure out like how each shot's gonna be told, if it's a wide angle shot, if it's a cowboy shot, you can jot all the information down for each scene with the shot lister app. There's also shots from Celtics, which also Celtics script is what I recommend that they kind of work together. So shot list is what I use though personally. I like it. All those links down below in the description. So if you're an audio person, you know how to create music, you're a composer, you know how to use GarageBand maybe on the Mac, there's GarageBand on iPad and iPhone. Uh, I'm not an audio person personally, so that's usually, so you get someone else, get a third party to do that for me or I license music. I have people who I work with who do that with me. Plenty of royalty-free music, license-free music that you can use. Don't use copyrighted material though, things that you don't have the right to use. Now I wanna move the conversation over to post-production. What that is, that's the editing process. Now you're gonna be taking all your camera roll clips that you took, moving them over to your computer or your editing suite, and you're gonna be editing in like Sony Vegas, iMovie, Final Cut, Premiere Pro, Avid maybe, but did you know that you would edit your entire short film on your iPad? Yeah, there, there are options out there. If you want to start like adding cool color grades to your clips, I recommend Movie Looks. It's a great app. There's things that you can adjust in there too. You can get some epic looking cinema stuff or black and white, or if you're looking for more of just a quick little touch up, that's all in there. In terms of actual editing, uh, there is iMovie available from Apple. It's a hit and miss. Uh, if you want something to play with real quick, throw things together, try it. You do gotta fight the editor sometimes and because it's gonna want you to kind of like put things into a template or a uh, layout, so, I don't know. There's themes happening, but if you can figure it out, go for it. But I also recommend Adobe Premiere Clip. It's a great piece of software. If you use Adobe Premiere on the uh, computer, you can also take your clip project, move it on to Premiere Pro if you wanna get like more effects and to like go into After Effects and do something awesome editing you can do that it's great though premiere clip i recommend it it's in the app store now if you're looking for something a little bit more on the level of final cut pro or sony vegas available for ipad there's not a whole lot out there but pinnacle studio pro is probably the furthest you're going to get it's quite nice it's a nice in-depth editor on the ipad and it gets the job done so check that out as well it's, so we've talked about the apps and software that's going to help you on your apple device but where do you take it from there how do you create better stuff than just the raw iPad or the raw iPhone that you have? Well, I recommend some hardware. It's not the most expensive too. So if you already own an Apple device, you're not gonna be paying too much more like you would with the DSLR. So in terms of cases for iPad, I recommend iOGrapher. They create these awesome cases for iPad and iPhone where you just snap your device into it and then it allows you to put interchangeable lenses, kind of like a DSLR. So you can put like a macro lens, you can put a zoom lens, you can put a wide angle lens and just create awesome, better looking shots than you were before. These cases also have handles on them. You can also put them, mount them to a, any standard tripod, which is great. Any like high end or low end tripod that you can pick up at Walmart for like 30, 40 bucks, 50 bucks maybe. I don't know how much tripods are these days. Anyway, the iPad one that I have has three horseshoe mounts, which allows you to mount a Rode video mic. We'll talk about that more in a second, but uh, you want to put like a stabilizer on it or a handle, LED light to sort of just help lighten your vlog or your shot or whatever. It's possible. It's great. I love it. Talking about audio now, I recommend Rode products. Rode creates awesome audio for video gear. If you're gonna be shooting mobile, I or even with a entry-level DSLR, I recommend the Video Mic Pro. It's a great entry-level audio uh, shotgun mic, and uh, even works decent on a boom. If you eventually want to upgrade to like a boom mic, mount it onto the horseshoe mount, and you can plug it right into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So what you would do is just plug that in and then the uh, device will automatically start recording audio instead of from the mic that's built onto the iPhone or the iPad, it will just start recording straight to the mic, which is really handy. If you want audio that's gonna be right up close to your subjects, for example, with something like this, this is a lavalier mic. Uh, this is the Smart Lab Plus. There's also the original Smart Lab. These are great because they plug right into your iPhone, just like this. And I'm recording this audio instead of to my cinema camera, it's recording right to my iPhone. And uh, these things run for about 70 bucks or lower. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, eBay, and using the Rode recording app, you can basically just 
record everything straight to this and it's quite handy. You can actually use this in an actual short film if it's a wide angle shot, hide it under a scarf or under a shirt. You don't want to move too much with this because you know, if I start moving my shirt around, you're gonna be getting a lot of this ruffling noise and you don't want that. That's about it. This was again, a quick rundown. Hopefully it didn't go too long, but hopefully you learned something and maybe this inspired you to sort of get out and start shooting. If you need a light kit, those are pretty cheap. You can find them on B&H. You can find them from starter ones on Amazon. So if you guys wanna like come with me on this journey, I'm a legally blind filmmaker. I create short films. Uh, who knows what I'll be creating in like a year or two. I, I got some awesome things planned for the first quarter, first like six months of this year. So super excited. But yeah, if you guys want to subscribe down below, follow me on social media. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.